Welcome to lesson 2b, Steady Adiabatic Duct Flow. In this lesson, we'll simplify the general steady control volume energy equation for steady adiabatic flow in a duct. We'll discuss stagnation-specific enthalpy and why it's important, and I'll do an example problem. So let's consider the energy equation in a duct like this. We approximate the flow as steady adiabatic, meaning no heat transfer, one-dimensional, meaning we're using the average speeds here across the duct, ignoring the effect of boundary layers. So variables such as pressure are uniform across an inlet or an outlet, for example. But the duct can be variable area. Speaking of ducts, one time my brother Duck and I were cleaning out a duct, and Duck had to duck to get into the duct. <laughs> You're strange, Dick. Uh, thanks, Dick and Duck, for that interesting tidbit. Let's start with our control volume energy equation from the previous lesson. We had the integral over the control surface of h plus v squared over 2 rho v dot n dA equals 0. This is a general equation for steady adiabatic flow for our 1D expanding duct here. At the inlet 1, v dot n becomes negative v1, since the unit normal outward vector n1 is opposite of the direction of v1. Similarly, at the outlet, v dot n is positive v2, since the unit outward normal n2 is in the same direction as v2. If we take our control surface, slicing through the inlet and outlet, and along the walls, so we have an entire closed surface. V dot n in this equation is zero along the walls. So the only contributions come from the inlet and the outlet when we integrate over the control surface. This equation thus becomes negative from here, h1 plus v1 squared over 2, rho 1, v1, a1. And then at the outlet from here, plus h2 plus v2 squared over 2, rho 2, v2, a2 equals 0. But we recognize this grouping of terms as m dot 1, the mass flow rate at the inlet, and this grouping of terms as m dot 2. But we know that m dot 1 equal m dot 2 by conservation of mass. So this equation simplifies to h1 plus v1 squared over 2 equal h2 plus v2 squared over 2. This is our simplified energy equation for steady adiabatic 1D duct flow. Let's also define H0 as H plus V squared over 2. We'll call this the stagnation specific enthalpy, with the 0 or not subscript indicating stagnation conditions. In words, H0 is the specific enthalpy of a fluid when it is brought to rest adiabatically. This is our definition, and here we are talking about adiabatic flow. And since we can write these terms as H0 on both sides, this equation becomes H0 1 equal H0 2. In other words, stagnation-specific enthalpy remains constant in steady adiabatic duct flow. And as a side note, this equation applies even if the flow is not isentropic. In the derivation of this equation, we've said nothing about isentropic conditions. So there can be friction and other irreversibilities, and this equation will still hold as long as the flow remains adiabatic. This will become important later on when we talk about shock waves and flow in long ducts where friction becomes important. Let's do an example problem of steady adiabatic duct flow Air flows in an expanding duct, as we show here. The duct is insulated. We assume perfect insulation, which means no heat transfer and thus adiabatic conditions. We measure V1, T1, and T2, and we want to calculate V2 at the outlet. We also want to calculate M1 and M2 and then determine if this flow is subsonic or supersonic. As usual, we list our assumptions and approximations the flow is steady and adiabatic, the air is an ideal gas, and we approximate the flow as quasi-one-dimensional. What I mean by this is that at some cross-section, 
the actual velocity profile will of course have boundary layers satisfy the no slip condition at the walls and will not be one dimensional but if we take the average speed which we call capital V we approximate this in our minds as a one dimensional velocity profile with that same speed V that's what we mean by quasi one dimensional some people say quasi one dimensional to solve this problem we meet all the requirements of the energy equation we just talked about so h not one must equal h not two the stagnation specific enthalpies must remain constant along the duct we can expand this out h1 plus v1 squared over 2 equal h2 plus v2 squared over 2 but for air which is an ideal gas recall that h equals cpt thus we have cpt1 plus v1 squared over 2 equals cpt2 plus v2 squared over 2 which we can solve for our unknown v2 after a little algebra we get v2 equals square root of v1 squared plus 2 cp t1 minus t2 this is our answer in variables now we plug in the numbers v1 was given and cp for air is known and the two temperatures are also given the k's cancel and notice that i used cp with these convenient units as we discussed with gas constant previously so that the units here and here are the same we have homogeneity of the units which we must have to do the calculations properly with these convenient units I don't even need any unity conversion factors the answer is 652.601 meters per second which I'll write to four digits as my final answer notice that the given value of V1 453.1 meters per second is less than V2 which is 652 meters per second. Do any of the students notice anything strange here? Well, this is the opposite of what we're used to for incompressible flow. Yeah, we always said before that velocity goes down as area goes up. Right, Duck and Dick. We have an expanding duct, but V goes up as area goes up. This is not what we're used to with incompressible flow, but it turns out, as we'll show in later lessons, that this is a sure indication that this flow is supersonic. Part B is to calculate M1 and M2, the Mach numbers. Well, M1 is just V1 over A1, which is V1 over square root of gamma RT1, and when I put in the numbers, we get M1 equal 1.146, which is supersonic. This agrees with this discussion we just had here. Whenever V goes up with area, we can be assured that this is supersonic flow. Subsonic flow would do the opposite. Similarly, M2 is V2 over A2. And when you plug in the numbers, you get M2 is 1.948, which is also supersonic. And as a final comment, here not only does V go up as the area increases, but also, Mach number goes up as area goes up. Mach number increases in a supersonic expanding duct. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.